So today I want to talk about the movie The Forge. And this was a really good movie. If you're a Christian who's struggling or you just want to grow in Christ or build that relationship with Christ, this is the movie for you. This movie, just watching it, will just revitalize you, re-energize you, because it covers all the key concepts and principles as Christians that we should follow. It covers forgiveness, unity, discipleship, love for one another. And I also want to, you know, pretty much tie up all these concepts just in one passage of Scripture, which covers everything that we need to know as Christians in order to grow and be the Christians that Christ wants us to be. But before I jump into all this, let me just say, welcome to another Practical Bible with Ron Rod. Talk about using a Bible in everyday life. This, this whole channel is about encouraging you and helping us grow together. And if you like what you see in this content, hit subscribe. And if you really like it, you want to know when I release another video, hit the little bell icon. So let me go ahead and jump right into this. This movie was the best movie that the Kendricks Brothers has ever done as far as I'm concerned. Because it covers so many key concepts as Christians that, you know, in order for you to grow in Christ and be the person that Christ wants you to be, you need to do these concepts. And, you know, yesterday I'd taken my daughter out for lunch at Outback. It was my grandson's birthday. He turned five years old. I was in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So I, you know, was thinking, hey, after we got done, we went to the mall. And I said, hey, I want to go watch a movie. Well, a buddy of mine sent me a you know, message saying, hey, that Reagan movie is really good. But I was also thinking about The Forge. I watched the trailer. The trailer just almost made me cry. Just watching the trailer for The Forge just about makes you cry. And I looked it up and it's like, hey, it's got 100% Rotten Tomatoes. So I say, hey, I'm going to go watch it. So I went to the Bowling Green Theater and I'm in there. My sister comes in and her her husband, her husband and her, they pastor a church there in Bowling Green. So I had her come sit with me. And she had her um, friends with her from church and her daughter was with her and her daughter's friend was with her as well. So it's good to see my sister. Um but let me just go and jump in right what this what this is about without giving too much away from this. So it's about a 19-year-old boy, or young man, I should say, named Isaiah Wright. He has no idea what he wants to do with his life. He's sitting around playing video games, hanging out with his friends, and his mom's tired of him just not doing anything. He's just kind of wasting his life. So his mom threatens and says, hey, look, if you don't get a job in 30 days, I'm kicking you out of the house, which good for mama, you know, so... He goes and he puts in a job application at a place called uh, Moore's Fitness. And the, owner, the president of the company, Joshua Moore, you know, hires him, takes him on and starts discipling him. And he also, you know, invites Isaiah to also join his, his men's group, which is a discipling group called The Forge. And this whole group, this whole idea concept is that, you know, help other young men, help them grow in Christ, encourage them and build them up and, you know, help them through life and just be disciples for them. And so this whole movie is about um, Isaiah's new identity of transformation in Christ. And it also talks about how we're supposed to treat one another. And it even mentions this scripture here, Luke 6, 31. Let me bring this up here. It says, do to others as you would have them do to you. That's such a powerful scripture. And that's one of those scriptures that if we just did that every single day, treated someone the same way we would be treated Man, that would solve a lot of issues out there. And the thing about this movie, like I said, it covers the core concepts of forgiveness, unity, discipleship, and loving one another. And it really, this entire concept for this movie, and the things that we as Christians really need to hang on to and need to hold close to our hearts and, and want to build that relationship with Christ, we can read this. In Paul's letter to the Colossians, in Colossians 3, 12 through 17, which re reflects believers' new identity in Christ. This is a reflection of how we as Christians should have our identity in Christ. And it goes right in line with this movie, The Forge. So let me just take us to Colossians 3, 12 through 17. So I'm going to go through here and just read it from verse to verse. So let me read verse 12 here. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people... Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That is what we should do. This, this is what, as believers, we should put on these virtues. And as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, 
these virtues flow out of our relationship with Jesus Christ. They, they are there because of our, through our relationship with Jesus Christ. That compassion that we should have for one another, that kindness and that humility, that gentleness and that patience. And yesterday in my men's, I go to a men's meeting on Saturdays. And one of the things we were talking about, um, let me see, was about can you sin when you're loving someone? When you're loving someone as Christ loves someone, can you sin at that moment? That's a really good question. And we all came to this conclusion that no, when you're loving someone in Christ, it's hard to sin. You know, I just couldn't really think of any circumstance where I had ever, you know, sat down and loved someone and really wanted to encourage someone where I was thinking about sinning or thinking about being disobedient to God. It just, it just didn't happen. So if we were to share this compassion, this love for one another, we're gonna, you're going to sin a whole lot less because you want to help and encourage people. So let me go to the next verse here, verse 13. And it says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So this here talks about bear with each other and forgive one another. I mean, this is something that's so important to maintain that unity and peace within the body of Christ. And we can read this in Ephesians 4, 3. It says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Through the bond of peace. And the example they used in the movie, and I'm not giving too much away here, about, you know, um, helping bear each other's burden was that he had Isaiah hold this sword that was like, weighed like 10 pounds. And he's having Isaiah, he's holding the sword, and he's talking to Isaiah, he's holding it. All of a sudden, you start seeing Isaiah's arm, it starts to shake. And he's having a hard time holding it up. And then Joshua Moore goes, look, let me show you how we can make this so much easier. And all the men in the group went over, put their hands under the sword, or put their hands on his hand, and started holding the sword up for him. So as Christians, we should help bear one another's burdens so that we can help one another, make it easier for one another. That's what we are commanded to do. And we do this also by forgiving one another. And I know sometimes that's hard, but the pastor preached that today, that in order, you know, to get that favor with God, we need to forgive one another. And sometimes that's hard, but we got to realize that the grace that God gave us, the very grace that we should share that grace with others, that forgiveness with others. The Bible is very clear that we're supposed to forgive one another and love one another. It's so clear on that. And if you want to grow in Christ, you need to forgive someone. If you want to go and be everything that Christ wants you to be and be within his will, you have to forgive one another. I know sometimes it's hard, but if we just think about what Christ did on the cross, the pain he went through, the suffering he went through, and he was still able to say at the very end, Father, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He said that on the cross, and he was innocent. He was still his love, and that's the same love we should share. And the Bible says, you'll know we're his disciples by the same love that, we, that he gave to us that we share with others. So if we want to be forgiven and we want to grow in Christ— we want to have that peace in our lives. We need to forgive. So let me go here to verse 14 here. Let me go back to that scripture there. So in verse 14, it says, And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. That is so, so powerful. Love binds us in that perfect unity. It's that glue that holds all all of the other virtues together enables true unity among believers. And this is where I was talking about, can you sin while you're loving someone? And I'm going to say, no, you cannot. Or it's, it's almost practically impossible. There's maybe some side case that I haven't thought of, but really, realistically, it is very hard to sin when you're loving someone, truly loving someone with Christ's love. It's just, it's just a powerful thing to love one another. And that gives us that peace that we need, that peace that passes all understanding that I talk about a lot on this channel because I want everybody to experience that peace. That's, that's the difference of someone who has a relationship and who doesn't. So someone who has a relationship with Christ will have that peace. 
Yeah, you're going to have some hard times. You're going to have some suffering in your life. You're going to have some pain in your life. There's a peace that's going to come with that, knowing that the Lord has you, has your favor, and that things are going to work out towards his favor and towards the good for all those who love him. So let me jump down here to verse 15 through 16. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs. Let me roll this down here. From the Spirit, sing to God with gratitude in your heart. That is so, wow. I mean, let that peace of Christ rule in your heart, as I was talking about, is that inner peace, that peace that passes all your understanding. And that word of Christ that dwells in you richly is achieved through teaching, admonishing one another, and singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sometimes we find ourselves in a place where it's like, what should I do? And just singing a song or listening to a song and saying a prayer and just getting your mind off the things that's bothering you and getting your minds on heavenly things can help give you that peace. And admonishing one another, building each other up, you know, encouraging those when someone else is hurting. So today we had a, one of the guys that's on my altar team, he went to another church to help pray for a guy who was dying of cancer. I mean, the guy's been given this thing, hey, the, he was told he's gonna, this guy was going to die from cancer. The guy's name is Joe. So the guy from my altar team went to go pray for Joe. The elders prayed for him. And the guy on my altar team was telling me, said, hey, he said, as we're praying for Joe, Joe's in all this pain, and Joe starts praying for everybody around him. He started thinking about everybody else other than himself. And a lot of times that's what we need to do, admonishing one another, helping one another, and growing in Christ. That will help us grow in Christ. And like I said, that's just an amazing thing to see, just to see someone who loves Christ so much that they forget what their pain is and look at trying to help others because they have that peace in their life that peace, that inner peace that Christ has promised us. So let me jump down here to verse 17. Make sure I got that whole verse. And it says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So let's think about this. In the name of the Lord Jesus is to do things through his authority, to obey his commands for our lives, to make disciples. And we see this in Matthew 28, 18 through 9. It says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. That is so, wow. I love that scripture. It's such a powerful, powerful, powerful scripture. And the thing is, not only, you know, when you say to do things in the name of Jesus, it also means to represent Christ in our actions and to offer thanksgiving to God. So we want to be like Christ. We want to show that integrity, living that life of integrity for him. The same integrity that Jesus Christ had. So when we say in the name of Jesus, not only the authority that is through Jesus Christ, but to also have that integrity and to represent Christ in our actions as well and offering thanksgiving to God. So I encourage you to, to just live that life, that repentant life, that we've been commissioned to do, to love one another, to treat others the way that you want to be treated, and to admonish one another, to help carry each other's burdens. And think on this, this scripture, Colossians 3, 12 through 17, and to live it in a way that honors Christ. And I pray that everybody out there well, just, just read this scripture and just think about it and pray about it. Because the thing is, the biggest thing in this, one of the biggest things in this movie was Isaiah had to forgive his father. And Joshua Moore shared a story where, story where he had to forgive the man who killed his son through a drunk driving accident. 
Those are powerful things. That, and even as Christians, those are hard things that we'd have to overcome. But this movie covers how we're supposed to forgive one another. And one of the scriptures that are brought up in the movie was in Romans 12, 19 through 21. It says, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So I leave you with that. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Because everything will be taken care of by God. So with that being said, I love you all. God bless. Peace out. Thank you.